Welcome back to the channel. How to repair rust, cowl panel, and windshield. First gen Camaros are notorious for rust at the base of the windshield. That damage usually extends into the dash and lower cowl. My Camaro, no different. Dash panel shot, lower cowl is repairable. In this video, we're going to go step by step through the process on how to fabricate a custom patch panel, weld it in, and make it look as good as new. Stick around to the end, see how it all turns out. Please reach out and comment. I respond to all of them and really enjoy hearing from you. Like, subscribe if you haven't, follow along. A lot of good content coming on our 67 Camaro build. Let's have some fun. You may recall my dash panel. Here it is, I just plopped it down uh, to give you an indication of what it was like. Uh, you can see uh, this typical uh, problem area on first gen Camaros. I do have a new dash panel on hand. Let's pop that out of the way. As we continue to peel the onion, so to speak, now you see the upper cowl for the most part, accentuating the word most, it's fairly solid, a lot of pitting. I have neutralized the rust here and wire wheeled it and the like. So you see its current state. I have X on all the spot welds so uh, you can see i'm contemplating on taking it out but i have an opportunity here by opening up this vent box i do have access to prep you know for the most part the inside is solid just surface rust in there you see the original color of my camaro tahoe turquoise um, as much as i'm trying to like that color because it's not very popular. I think it might be cool to repaint the vehicle that color. I just can't bring myself to like it. So they'll have to percolate for a little longer. But regardless, my braces along this post actually serves its purpose very well. So even though I've opened things up, everything is still very solid because of the braces attached to the framework. That was the intent. But, in order to repair this properly, I can do it one of two ways. I can piece it out, weld it in place, and continue to go. So this is a problem area. This is a problem area. Pretty good. Not so good. Again, pretty good. Pitted. And then we come over to this side, and at this end, it needs to come out. So. The quick and easy way would be just to repair it in place in those three areas. And Bob's your uncle and you can continue on your merry way. Or, a lot more work, but I can set this top piece free completely and get it out. Keep my supports in place. By having it out of the way, I'll have a lot more easy access to prep and clean and seal the inner cowl before putting the top back on. And then I can also prep the layer underneath here properly and then weld everything back up. Hmm. Can of worms? <laughs> or the easy way out? Let me ponder that. Here's the underside of the dash, the infamous before picture haven't cleaned off any of the rust. You have to rebuild that corner a bit. See what it looks like once this is all cleaned up. And this corner will need to be re rebuilt. Other than that, I think it's pretty good. But time will tell. There's still one layer of metal from that upper air box I want to get off. No point in leaving it sandwiched there. It serves no purpose. So that's why I peel that off. And I can uh, dress it and clean it. And then I'm good to weld to it. A little wire wheel action. Followed by some chemical stripper. And a cleaning strip disc. And we have nice shiny sound solid metal. It's time to patch the inner lower cowl. This is the passenger corner right at the base of the windshield. It's rotten out. I've highlighted with my marker 
you see how the jagged edges it's rusted out through pretty thin here so I wanted to patch this corner to make it solid the rest of the top of the panel is solid metal it is a little pitted but uh, that's more cosmetic it's still plenty of meat there and, and it is solid but here it's completely eroded away so I have to patch it so enter my patch how did I do it well I simply bead roll a quarter inch bead tipped it with my trusty body hammer over a vise massaged it for about half an hour trying to get it to sit flat over top of in essence my form the existing cowl and all I'm going to do now I traced it I'm going to use a cutoff wheel um, stay away from my white line and then it you know inch up against it with a die grinder until this fits with very little gap a nice tight tolerance so I can easily MIG weld it in place I left this edge a little longer so that once it sets down into place I'll just match that edge and grind it so it's consistent all right let's chop away the underside and come back and have a look Similar to the passenger side, the only other real area of concern on this inner lower cowl panel for me is this top corner on the driver's side. I'm going to repeat the process that went through on the passenger side. I've marked out the extent of the eroded metal. We're into sound metal on this side. I'm going to repeat the process. Cut, bead roll, trim, whittle, weld. Take you through the process. First step is to transfer the leading edge of this inner lower cowl panel to a paper template. This is the template I used on the passenger side. It's a mirror image on the drivers obviously. Uh, you just flip it over. So with that contour or that profile, that profile is parallel all down the panel. I simply transfer that contour onto my sheet of 20 gauge and with calipers once it's cut bring it back and start to fit it in place. Okay, my paper template held in place on my 20 gauge sheet. All I'm concerned with is transferring this leading edge. I'm gonna trace that leading edge and cut it and then use calipers to create parallel lines to indicate where the bead roll is, where the cut panel is, and where the extent of the panel is. All off that leading edge. That's all the template is for is to transfer that leading edge. Cut it and come back. Okay, with the rough shape in place, just a little cleanup because that edge is so important because it is the basis for the contour line. So you want it to be bang on. So I'm just gonna clean it up and make sure it's bang on with a little All right, that edge is cleaned up perfectly to my trace profile. Now I'm gonna take my caliper and I've measured in from that edge three quarters of an inch. And that gives me a little bit of play on that top lip to the center of the bead roll. At 
so I can see it when I'm in my bead roller. I'm just marking a nice bright white line following my scribe. It was easier to grind off the mill scale and prep the patch now, so I had to rescribe and outline the bead rolled profile again. No biggie. Let's head over to the bead roller. Nothing fancy here. Your cheap Princess Auto Harbor Freight bead roller. Panel set in on line with my mark. Tension the bead roll die down onto the panel don't want to overstress it it's not the most robust piece of equipment go in multiple passes take it slow crank the wheel not motorized again for the amount i use it um, this is the second piece i've actually ever bead rolled so uh, i'm learning as i go so don't think i'm some expert here speed rolling. Take it right off the panel. There we go. My second bead roll. Well, here's the progression of the piece. Here's the passenger side. So again, it's a mirror image. I've prepped it for welding. Um, but you see the profile, bang on, the center line of the bead rolls up. All right. So now I have to tip this edge over right at the crown of the bead and it's a fairly sharp edge. The only way I know with my rudimentary hand tools here, um, I thought of bead rolling it but I'd crush this profile. So I'm just using my vise and I will tip it over, work it through and tip it over. Okay, you get the idea. We're, we're zeroing in on it. Um, now I'm gonna head over to the cowl to see how it's fitting, come back, back and forth. But then I'll have to start to cut that bottom reveal 
in order for this to sit flat. Initial test fit. Well, fitting like a glove, it is not. Uh, this patch is in essence still a flat piece of metal. All we've done is create the bead roll and start it to zero in on that upper profile. But you can see there's still a lot of uh, contouring that needs to happen. So there is a uh, high point here that we need to bend over and also uh, that slight crown. But before I do that, while it's still a flat piece, I'm going to zero in on the proper dimensions. So I'm going to uh, butt weld somewhere off this radius, so roughly where my line is. I'll take my caliper and measure from the center of the bead roll down to that line. Scribe, mark, and cut. That cut I'll measure to the extent of this corner and then come down with it. Similarly, on this far end of the sheet, this line continues up to the corner. I'll zero in on that dimension as well and get the proper rough patch sized and then I'll start uh, bending it to um, in essence my template, my form. By keeping this all in place it's a form work. If I were to cut it out I'd have nothing to reference to. So cutting is the last step of the matter. Cutting out this is the last step. Getting it to fit perfectly on top of it is the goal. Okay, it's starting to resemble a patch. Okay, zeroing in, still a little long, still a little long, that's okay. Um, but now you gotta get this crown entered into it. So I'm just gonna, um, Use my Herculean strength. <laughs> uh, good thing it's 20 gauge. Okay, getting better. Hey, double duty. My braces. I can bend across. Probably out of camera. Okay, getting better. Get the idea a bit of massaging to go we'll come back okay i got it fitting pretty well now just the final trim and scribe so i'm just going to uh, oh i shouldn't have marked there because i'm going to cut there okay i'm going to outline where the edge of the panel is i'll stay off the white line because the white line is outside of the patch. So I'll cut on the inside of my white line and then stay off of it as well. And then I'll come back and I will grind to it as I fit it in place. So there's my line. I'm not gonna trim that yet and uh, keep that parallel. So we'll just take a sliver off of it and we're good to go. Trim it and come back. Okay, finessing it in is done. Look at that, lovely tolerance. Nice and tight. We're ready for some uh, rust treatment to neutralize the rust, steal it, and then we can weld. Both sides are prepped and we'll do both at the same time. I use this rust check rust converter. I pour a little into something I have lying around, a WD-40 cap, and just brush it on liberally. Liberally. There you go. This is simple chemistry. Rust converters work. Turns it black. All this is is surface rust, so I, I grinded it down, and um, all you see is a little bit of pitting, which is fine. This will convert it and neutralize it, and it's ready to paint over. So we just let that dry, 
and I'll hit it with a couple coats of steel it and we're good to go. I prepped the passenger side um, previously or earlier and that's been drying while I've been working on this side. So I'm actually ready to start welding the passenger side. So let's go over there. You can see my patch fits lovely. It's clamped in place. And now what I do, you just feel around uh, where it's perfectly flush. I'll put a tack and I'll start spreading the tacks out. So right here and right here will be my first two tacks. The cowl is a little high here. I'll be clamping it around. This is sitting beautifully flush. Once this is tacked, I can remove the vice grip and uh, start to move up and down and around. For this gauge of metal, I've zeroed in on some good weld settings and have very minimal blow through. So I use a Lincoln 180 MIG pack. For this gauge thickness, the 20 gauge, I'll actually set this to the A or B setting. I'll start with B, a little hotter. If I start to blow through, I'll reduce it down to A. But the trick is keeping the wire speed down a bit. So the wire speed is only at two and a half. Two and a half at B, if, if it's a little too hot and blows through, I'll reduce it to A, but keep more or less the same wire speed. And I've had great success on thin gauge with that. And uh, wets in nicely at the edges and can grind it smooth and the welds disappear. the inner upper cowl cleaned and prepped, I'm ready to patch that top hedge that goes along the windshield. How am I doing that? Well, I simply took a straight edge, I happened to have a ruler 18 inches long, so I brought the corner in contact with the edge, corner in contact with the edge, and then at measured increments, I measured from the straight edge to the tip, straight edge to the tip. So you see here my crude dimension and I reference the curve so I was able to transfer that curve to a straight piece of 20 gauge metal that's what this is 20 gauge the tipped profile is three quarters of an inch from the edge just take a caliper three quarters of an inch and then I'm doing it a consistent inch and a half why am I doing a consistent inch and a half because now I have the same curve I can flip over on my parent sheet and do the opposite side. So I'll have an 18 inch swath, an 18 inch swath, and then I'll make up the middle piece uh, because the curve is inconsistent along the edge. I will uh, cut and butt weld that in place and we're good to go. It's tacked in at this end. Here we're cutting, stitching the welds, and here we're fully dressed show you it in progress. A little bit more to go. It's looking great. Flipped it over to the underside. You can see nice penetration on those welds. I'm gonna dress it up on this side. 
fill in some gaps where needed, and we're good to go. Inner upper cowl patch looking really good. First third done. This ugliness to go. Looking good. It is new.